All right guys, so for this video, um, we're gonna go ahead and go step by step through the whole process and I'll probably speed up some of it um, because it's quite a long process, but there's a few things I wanted to mention. First, the uh, trim saw here is ran on pure vegetable oil. Um, it's a great lubricant for all kinds of stones, um, soft and hard rock, and also it doesn't rust the machine out. So. Um, we'll go ahead and I already cut this snowflake obsidian down just a little bit. Um, now something special with this snowflake obsidian is it actually has a silver sheen in it and I have not seen one previously that has snowflake and a silver sheen in it. Uh, so by the time we're done here, hopefully I can get a good shot on camera of that silver sheen. Uh, so I'll go ahead and place this and we'll get started. All right, now, so typically I like to start and finish the stone when it's feeding through by hand, um, and it gets it a nice edge to start cutting on. Um, you don't get really that uh, bad of a cut, but as you can see right here, typically you don't want that much of a difference in your, in your thickness, um, but one of the downsides with this blade um, it's it's not very big and so as you saw I had to take it off and rotate it and feed it through but I found a good way to when I when I trim this down um, certain settings uh, it'll be better to have a thicker side and then some settings will be better to have the thin side so I can cut that off and do just fine with that um, you know, lapidaries all over will do uh, different things in different ways. Uh, it's all about process and how what works best for you. So uh, next, I'll go ahead and trace this out, and we'll go with the next steps. All right, so the next step here, I'm going to go ahead and trace this out. Now, I picked out a nice circle mount for this. Um, uh, I've, I've been trying to use larger mounts for this obsidian so you can s really see that sheen that I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm going to try to use the thinner side of this. Um, so I'll go ahead and grab my template here. I'm going to try to find a nice spot where snowflakes really pop out especially after it's domed and rounded um, they'll smooth together it'll look really nice so we'll go something about like that Pretty difficult to see this black marker on there, but in the light, yeah, you should be able to see that. Now I just take a ruler and go ahead and box it out. And then after you have it boxed out there, you take it at an angle and that helps with the rounding process. And 
And next we'll take it back over to the trim saw. As you can see, I took the hood off and put this front cover on it so you can have a lot of space to work with it. And we'll go ahead and trim it up. All right, so I tried to get the light on it so you can see the lines. All right, now that it's all cut, and it's ready to go it's ready for the fun part now obviously we're not going to just use uh, these three wheels that I was showing in the, the earlier video um, there's a hundred grit a 240 grit and the 600 grit soft wheel here uh, and also down here I just stepped down and replaced to a 320 grit uh, a 12 and then a couple 1200 soft wheels there and they're all diamond resin um, and then there's a, a leather polish wheel down there for certain stones like lapis um, to use instead of the felt. Um, we'll get that later. So we'll go ahead and start grinding this one down and uh, start the polishing. <laughs> these first so they would look like this when I would start forming them and I found that doing it by hand you have much more control over especially the circles and ovens. Sometimes with these obsidians, I have to take them off and remark them. It's starting to fade a little bit, but you can see that nice round shape starting to take place. Um, while I'm marking this, one of the most difficult things about this process is different stones or minerals have different, uh, they fracture in different ways, they have different hardnesses, and uh, the obsidian has what's called a concordial fracture which it breaks it chips kind of like a chip in your windshield and if you go too rough or you know if you hit it the wrong way you can chip your whole edge off and it won't sit properly you have a gap in the setting so uh, that's one and then uh, with the hardness uh, things like well, this is a new slab that I've been working with. Uh, it's a ruby kyanite. Now, ruby is corundum. It has a hardness of 9. Way above, I believe, the 4, 4.5 range of kyanite. And so when you're grinding and polishing, you'll grind down a lot quicker on one side or the other. Or... Um, you know, you'll get pitting in, in different areas of the stone uh, that grind off quicker, so it makes it a lot more difficult. That's why agates are so much fun. Alright, I went ahead and remarked this here. Alright, I went ahead and got this remarked, and we'll keep going with it.
All right, so now when I have it just about to fit in there, you can see. I'll go ahead and do the dopping process. You want to leave a little bit on the outside um, to account for when you're doing your final polishing and doming so you don't go too far. So next we'll go ahead and do the dopping process and get the polishing. So now we have the obsidian pretty close to fitting in the setting, uh, we're going to go ahead with the dopping process and I already switched out the wheels here so I uh, went ahead and put on the 320 grit hard wheel, there's a 1200 grit soft wheel and then the 600 flex wheel on there. Um, no reason for the order besides it just makes more sense with the water source and how they fit on there with my skates. So, as I showed in the first video, probably wondering why there's a burner there. What I do is I heat up water in this and I pour it in and I like to use steam uh, instead of setting my rocks. Um, some of them are really sensitive to heat. So I like to use the steam and set them right on top here and it slowly warms them. Um, typically I'll just use a candle under there to heat it. Uh, that alcohol lamp also. And then over here is the dot wax which is ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and heat up the stone and show you how to dot it and then we'll get to rounding it. All right, so there's the obsidian in there, and it's pretty hot, so I think it's about ready to go ahead and stick. So we'll pull it off. Get your dot wax on there. form a dome around it. And this stuff sets quick so you have to make sure it's pretty level before it sets. So we'll let that cool for a second and then go ahead and get to doming it. All right, it's nice and cool now. Um, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of different lapidaries will use, you know, different grits, different stages. Uh, I just like starting with the 320 grit and moving down uh, just to make sure I have a nice dome on it. And we'll go ahead and start this. First step there, take it down a little bit more of an angle and continue to dome it all.
Alright, so once we're pretty satisfied that all the lines are out of it, it's looking pretty smooth. Bring it to focus. We'll go ahead and move down to the 1200 grit. That 1200 grit does great, it just smooths out all those little edges. So at this point, we'll go ahead and take it off the dop stick. Um, so what I usually do is I just set it there in the steam and it heats it up enough to where it'll just come right off uh, that stuff holds pretty tight so and then from there we'll go ahead and do our final polish and set it all right guys so we're on the final step now uh, got it all domed out ready for final polish here now I'll go ahead and show you so I just hooked up the, the water line and it will just drip out steadily, a nice slow drip. I just have it hooked up to the refill pump down there. Uh, with the obsidian, you know, different stones, you will use different, like this will, I'll use a cerium oxide and a felt uh, on the little rotary tool here. Um, so what I do is I usually just kind of brush it on there and let it sit in let it soak in for a little bit and I already had some on there so I'll go ahead and and then I'll also brush some right on the stone there and this is a, a cerium oxide slurry it's just uh, the powdered cerium oxide with a little bit of water in it like a thick paste and we'll go ahead and polish it up. You don't want any of this to, to dry up and cake on it. You just want to constantly keep it a little bit moist. Go ahead and put one more little coat on there and it should be good to go. Go ahead and dry it off. You get a nice shine on it, nice polish. So the last thing I'm going to try to show you with this one is the silver sheen that I was talking about.
you look real close, you can see gray lines that shoot through it when you rotate it in the light there towards the bottom. But anyway, so there you go. Fits perfect. I'll go ahead and mount it and put it on a chain. So from rough obsidian to a nice cabochon. I want to thank everybody who's already supported us. Um, you know, there's a, a difference between doing them handmade, and you can find them all over online uh, that are either made by machine or you notice a lot of them are wire wrapped. Um, so it's an easy way to get around if you don't form them correctly to simply wrap some wire around them and, and sell them as a nice cabochon. But we put a lot of work into this, I, and I love doing it, so I appreciate everybody for supporting us and let us know what you think about the video thank you